Namaste and in la catch, and welcome to this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and always I'm going to reflect on those two keyword phrases. Namaste comes from the Sanskrit spoken, it's Brahmi, and it simply means the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. In la catch comes from the Mayan across the world, and it means I am another you. So think about these two ancient phrases that recognize each of us when we meet on the street and the difference that that might make, just holding that in your mind, whether you speak it or not, just to come from that perspective will absolutely change your life, guaranteed. Cool, huh? All right. Well, this week's guest is Lisa Ma, and she is a most interesting individual that's had a wonderful career in technology. She has been with Yahoo. She's been with Live Person. She's had global marketing and, and re, um, development um, positions in those two companies. She was also part of Yahoo's employee foundation, which acted to raise uh, funds from their employees and distribute them to people and families in need. Now, she's also currently the uh, chief uh, growth officer at Hub, which is uh, a, a platform that was started by one of the founders of LinkedIn. So it's a pretty cool place to be. And she's also the uh, creator of Stronger Together X, which is her efforts at uh, being a super connector and, and connecting all the dots. So Lisa, thanks for being here today. Oh, great to be, here, to be here. Thank you, Zen, for having me here today. Wonderful. Now, you, you know, you've really had an interesting circuitous route through technology. And, and what did you find in there that, that both spoke to you inside and revealed things in the exterior world that you felt could be better or do more? Yeah, so I, I started my career in management consulting where... Um, my job was to go into different companies and solve for clients. And um, during that time, you know, just look at connecting the dots to see how we can help clients. But I just felt um, at that time, the, um, it, I, did, I didn't feel, I didn't feel like what I was doing was something that was going to change the world. I knew it was going to help the company that I was working on helping, but I didn't feel like it was going to do something that uh, I felt like it was going to change the world. So I was always seeking and looking for the next thing and the next thing. Uh, so yeah, I think I was always looking, I was working externally, but I was still trying to find myself inwardly, even though I was working at these great companies like Deloitte, Yahoo. Sure. You know what, something I found interesting um, expressed recently, but it was in a, a book that was put together back in the early 60s and published in 1964. But one of the things in it was this notion that we live half inside and half outside. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of reflecting that, you know, you were going through that same thing with your, your exterior world, wasn't it? Yeah, you were doing stuff, you were growing, you're probably having fun to some degree, right? Because yeah. that kind of stuff, uh, I know for our ilk, it is kind of fun. And yet there's still a bit of emptiness because there's not this overall service to humanity that, that's happening, yeah. or at least that's in your face. Right. Exactly. I, I mean, I was working at a lot of really amazing companies working on Wall Street and throughout the U.S. and I worked overseas as well. And as I was working at the different places, different clients, I was always seeking like something was missing. I, uh, no matter what I was doing, I felt like something was missing. And on the side, I was doing philanthropy and volunteer work as a way to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. uh, but then somehow it never converged. It it really was just two, two separate threads, like by day, right? I was a consult, consultant technologist and helping clients. But then in the evening and weekends, I was uh, helping um, nonprofits, being on nonprofit boards as a way to help humanity. Mm -hmm. And I was always trying to find that wholeness. Uh, and I, I would say it's only now that I've felt like it's converged. 
uh, it's during 2020 when I was really tuning in and really um, diving deeper and connecting the dots on my journey and uh, what I love and what I'm passionate about when all the, the dots became very clear that what I did for work was just training, training me this whole time to be where I am today. Right. And today is really about what is the mission I'm here to do? What is the higher purpose I'm here to do? That we're all here to do, right? Because I think if we tune in, then we discover our mission. And in 2020, during uh, the lockdown, mm -hmm. I had a lot of time to uh, to do introspection because we're doing, doing a lockdown, right? It was before I was always busy doing lots of things. And, you know, I was taught to be a multitasker, right? So that was supposed to be a good thing. <laughs> and then, right, so I never right. really tuned in. And then so... But then uh, during the lockdown, I started uh, getting up at 5 a.m. before sunrise every morning. And I started tuning in, meditating, and just finding time to listen to my thoughts. And when that happened, a lot of synchronicity started happening where I started meeting people that I'm meant to meet. And then my purpose uh, started lining up with what I've been trained for my work. So I just saw what I done at Deloitte at Yahoo Life person. Right. Those were just so you kind of had your own apocalypse. Right? <laughs> yeah. Because right? apocalypse, apocalypse means uncovering it and it's uncovering knowledge. So there's this yes. knowledge. And I think we all have this it, it built in, you know, where we've got this, I call it a perfected form, fit and function in the world yeah. that the silver lining from the sequestration and the obsession and self hygiene you know, you turned it inward, which is uh, when it started happening, I, I said the same thing to Luba, my wife, that I hope that this would give people the opportunity to turn inward and yeah. do some searching and, and question what their life is about and maybe find a greater purpose in that because now we've got time. Yeah, yeah. But, it's yeah, more exactly. of a forced, um, quiet place. Yeah, what was interesting too, you just reminded me is, um, so at that time, I was really tuning in and pay, really mindfully paying attention to what was happening around me. And um, there was this training, it's an inner warrior training that really spoke to me and it popped up on my Facebook feed at the time. And I'm, I'm like, oh, that looks really interesting. And I discovered it was an organization called My Intent holding an event called Inner Warrior Training. It was on a Saturday. So that I attended the event and uh, it was just so amazing, just amazing people, high conscious people, just people just want to gather at this time and really inspired me a lot. And then um, they also offer a lot of different uh, classes like with breathwork teachers, meditation teachers, yoga, and also ha the Hoffman process. So anyways, mm -hmm. I started listening to my inner guide to say, hey, you know, just follow what resonates. So I started doing the inner warrior training and lo and behold I found my inner warrior <laughs> during that process and you're right the power is within if we tune in we we can um hear our inner guides and activate our power which activates our higher purpose I I agree and, and it's all it's been said for <laughs> probably longer than, than any of us can remember um in, in throughout our lifetimes as well that in the silence is the voice of being yeah. And when we can get quiet and listen, asking the right questions, first of all, I think that's the, the critical piece that most of us don't tune into for a while. Yeah. Um, it, it, and depending on the time in life, you know, you went yeah. from what I hear you saying, you went through the normal, um, for lack of a better, corporate ascension. And yes. not, it, it's not a bad thing. It, it's actually a good thing because you yeah. demonstrated to yourself. You you knew you had the trust in yourself for what you could do and, and what you could provide. Yeah. And then in this rapid change, now you had the opportunity to just sit and investigate, ask yeah. questions, listen yeah. to yourself, pay attention to the synchronicities, as you mentioned early. Or, um, and these tend to kind of act as guideposts or signposts along yeah. the path that gets you where you need to be as long as you're paying attention. Right, right. What's another interesting thing was that I'm very analytical, right? Like from, as a management consultant and a technology sure. 
you have to be very analytical. So I question everything and I look at you know left side, right side. So when then I was going through my spiritual awakening, I questioned everything. And then I realized I'm experiencing this and I'm questioning this. This is for real. I'm exper I'm feeling it and I'm I'm seeing the magic. I'm experiencing the magic. So how did you notice the difference between what you were thinking in your with your analytical mind and yeah. what was was happening with your body yeah. and the experience you were having? Because that's a completely different yeah. um, sense, if you yeah. will. It's experiential, it's visceral yeah. as opposed to intellectual. Yeah, when this when I'm using my analytical mind, right, I feel like there's more processing uh, involved, right, where you kind of have to think through, um, you know, the pros and cons of each, while you look at it all side. Uh, but then when I was um, uh, connecting the dot spiritually with my heart, I just knew the answers. Like, whereas before, like when I said, I, I'm really good at problem solving, in other words, it's just connecting the dots, right? But now I'm just doing it intuitively. Right. But it's another word, right? So problem yeah. solving is some people call it clear cognizant. I just intuitively know the dots to connect. I know that when I have to solve something, I just know intuitively who's supposed to be involved. How do you get it done in the you know highest possible way? Uh, well, and, and you've had training in that prior too. So yeah. your skill set actually, you know presented the opportunities for you in, in a different way and i know you introduced me to pauline crawford and, and you know she talks about using words differently and yes. whether it's problem solving or uh, opportunity investigation yes it words have yeah. so much power yes um well here's another thing that i find interesting i started connecting the dots on my journey <laughs> as a way mm -hmm. to understand who i am and what I discovered as I was connecting that I started tuning back to every single every single thing that I ever loved growing up, everything that resonated with me, like every movie, every book, right, every artist, every person. I started seeing the pattern become to emerge that all the people, like for instance, all those the songs I ever loved, books, they were all actually very awakened right. uh, people, right? And it's just that I didn't see it until later on like what is like their song imagine i've always loved that song the first moment when i heard it but because of what, that's a very right awakening right, right. Um, it, and over time the layers that, and yeah age and wisdom the ability to look right when you can you get to a place where you can observe or there's a dot i call it the domino effect mm -hmm. where something just clicks and all of a sudden everything all everything the patterns sense. that you just mentioned yeah. all of a sudden become apparent it's like yeah oh, right okay yes and, you, and then you have that visceral yeah right. <laughs> yeah and then i want to tune in every day like for instance i look at you know the earth and the stars behind you if you look at it the stars just dots right but when you connect them you create the constellation same thing Right, you connect the dots, just like. And it's really interesting too. Even in the brain, the 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 new photos and imagery that's coming out, where yeah. the neurocircuitry firing actually looks like a galaxy. It does. Or a nebula, or or something. And I, you know, why not? Um, yeah. Long ago, I heard that each of us are a reflection of the universe. Right. We we each perhaps maybe even are our own universe. And just like the rest of the universes, we're learning how to spin and twirl and not get in each other's way. Right, right. right? The harmony of self or with self, others, and nature promotes this. Right. And so in, in that, how are you, you know, when you're finding these things, some of our earlier conversations, yeah. you mentioned that critical piece in there where you began to see the dots and, and the connections yeah. to many things beyond just the yeah. personal relationships yeah so how has that evolved in, in your life and the work that you're doing now and mm -hmm. in, in, um, in the superconductor uh, uh, oops that's a rush tune super connector <laughs> yes um, yeah uh, kind so, of same thing right yeah so the key thing was just tuning in and doing what what spoke to my heart uh so i just followed that so in 2020 when we were in lockdown i just felt this this 
that there's a need to gather people virtually. And because I was trained as a consultant in technology at Yahoo, I just know how to use technology really well, right? right. So I, I've known Zoom, how to use Zoom for a long time. We were actually doing events in 2019 before the lockdown. So I was like, you know what? I think the way we bring people together to have virtual gatherings. And, and when I learned a product, or two, I just learned it really well. And then I saw it, um, and, and the way I saw it, Zoom was like, you have to use virtual uh, networking breakouts because that's the way you have meaningful conversations, right? Because if you just have a webinar, it's a one-to-many kind of conversation, right? It's good for knowledge sharing, but if you want to make connections, um, if you have it as a gathering, but you network people. So I started hosting virtual gatherings uh, where I would do bring people together to share wisdom and I shine the light on them and by holding space and just providing a platform just like the way you're doing here uh, and then but what I do is I do a networking breakout after where I help people find who they seek and what they seek and I also send an intention and then people always find <laughs> who they seek mm -hmm. and what they seek and then so um, there's this energy uh, collective energy happens and then I just saw the activation and then um, I started working with partners to also show them uh, how to do the virtual networking breakouts uh, and then, uh, yeah, the first, the first time when I realized it was a big success was, um, in, um, in, in May, um, I, I wanted to connect these super connector friends together. And in the past, I would just connect them via LinkedIn. It's like, Hey, so-and-so, so-and-so, so -and -so, right. But then I realized, mm -hmm. you know what? I want to network more. People. There's more, right. And more, right. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I wanted to be using technology and also everyone's stuck at home. Right. So I was like, hey, I'm going to have a virtual coffee, right? Every one has time for coffee, right? So then on a Saturday morning, I hosted a virtual gathering, virtual coffee gathering with six super connected friends. And really the goal was like, I just want to bring everyone together to, so that you can all meet. And that's right. why, you know, I facilitated a health space. I facilitated a gathering where I said, you know, just have everyone share who they are what their superpowers are and what their passion projects are. And these are the three questions I always ask. And as everyone share, everyone felt like, oh my God, this is such an amazing group. Everyone, amazing stories. I'm so inspired. And, and I was too, right? So next day, again, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. So much clarity, right, in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then um, I get this download saying, stronger together. We are stronger together. I'm like, I think we have to have a Stronger Together X Summit, right? Um, Isn't it interesting, uh, pardon me for interrupting, but I, I'm noticing the language that you're using and how that has shifted from where you were to where you are now and these terms that, that come up that like superpowers, right? It, it, and we don't think about that because it's all oh, that superpowers, oh, that's for superheroes. And, and what, aren't we? We all have superpowers. <laughs> right? We all yeah. have them. And we step into those. Yes. As you have in transcending your um, past professional life and then ascending into this new still professional life because you're operating on a very professional, moral, ethical, value-driven level mm -hmm. in yeah. bringing these people together to hopefully move things forward. And it's a slow, arduous process because we're still in process. We don't know uh, we barely have the questions to ask, let alone have the answers yet as to where we're going to be a year from now, two years from now, even five years from now. Yet you're making the effort to help make that process a little more um, flowing and not just discernible, but practical in a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, I think also um, it's really important to hold space where people have a space to be heard and to be seen. Uh, what I've learned during the process was that, you know, in before when I was doing this, when you go to, to a gathering, right, people always ask, what do you do? I actually never ask people this question. I don't really care what you do as a first thing. I want to know who you are, right? right. Because then we are all on, we are all the same, right? And then we, we just know each other on an equal level because when someone gets to know you better, right, then they can ask what you do, right? So then right. the connection becomes more authentic. That's why the question is always, right, who are you? Because when you share who you are, I remember a little bit 
example of who I am, right? Because you will help me send, remember certain things that may be in the back of my mind. And we're vulnerable enough to speak from that place. You know, when you, and you may find this too, it, it, it's probably in a variety, of, uh, shows up in a variety of ways. When you ask the question, who are you? You know, you start with, I am. Mm -hmm. Then what? Right? Yeah, and right. so where do you go from that? What do you find people or how do you find people responding to that question? Do they come from uh, this is what I do, right? Yeah. Or actually this is who I am and, and what yeah. I'm at. Yeah, I think it's by showing people. So I often start first. So I would say, who am I? Well, uh, you know, I am Lisa and my mission is to connect the world. <laughs> and so the people then, right? use that as an example. I, I never talk about, it's very rare actually I talk about what professionally I do. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think when we show lead by example, right? People will start sharing in that way. Uh, and because then all the question who I am, it's very open if you think about it, right? People Absolutely. People can start sharing who they see is in the audience. So if I know I'm talking to someone who's very high conscious, right? I'm gonna be talking, sharing a little bit more uh, about that aspect of myself. If I'm talking with someone who will purely talk, want to talk about, let's say, business oriented, then, you know, the conversation mm -hmm. will like navigate and travel in that way. So I just let it flow, basically, sure. where it goes. Uh, but I, I find that when you ask people about also the superpower, uh, it, it reminds them of the kid aspect of us. I know when I was little, I, I always wanted to be a superhero. And I always think if I had superhero, what, you know, if I'm a superhero, what, what you know, kind of superpower would I want to have, right? And I used to say, I would love to heal people and I would love to help, you know, like be a seeker. <laughs> and that's kind of what I do in a way right now, which is kind of funny, right? So then I just appeal to like, as if I'm talking to you when we were kids in the playground, like, who are you? What's your superpower? What do you like to do, right? Mm -hmm. Basic human questions, um, because there's no our ego-driven questions in there, right? But then later on, of course, I would want to know more, right? As I get to know you, and and that's that's the other aspect of us, of the work, right? Aspect. <laughs> sure. Now, do you find that in that process, when you're first showing up with with uh, a being, mm -hmm. right? Your being shows up first. <laughs> Before the doing. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the having always comes later. Yeah. Do you find that in this process where you're uh, focusing essentially your, your attention, intention, and interaction on developing the being first and letting that being in each person kind of unfold? Yeah. Then over time, people have the opportunity then once they get comfortable to start sharing their skill sets. And, and yeah. I've often wondered if, this process and i think it, it may be true that once people feel comfortable with each other then there, it's going to be almost like a process like d hawk had with um visa where there, there's a horizontal or flatline management right there's really no bosses there's no hierarchy per se the hierarchy is within mm -hmm. because there still is a hierarchy in in the yeah. the inner nature that we have yeah and yet this seems to be moving us toward being able to uh, amalgamate, if you will, the skill sets necessary in the natural process of coming together and seeing what we can do, how we can learn together, learn to work together better right. and figure out the answers that we need to serve humanity better. Exactly. I think it's, like, serving humanity is about coming together, activate our superpowers, right? But if we come from a place of doing instead of being, Doing is just this one thing here, one thing there, right? But if you come in from a perspective of, uh, you know, I'm going to collaborate with people that I trust, that I already know who they are, right? As a person, I just place that trust. And then when when you co-create for humanity, then you, you're just working, right? So toward that collective effort. So I just find when you come from a place of being, you, you just let things flow and and let co-creation happen. I mean, kind of like how, right, you think about how we ended up in this conversation, right? right? 
I saw your name. I'm like, Zen, that's a really interesting name. I would like, I'd actually like to learn more, right? And then as we have more engagement, right? Then I, I, I see who you are. And, and also I see what you do, right? Through more interactions. And then all of a sudden, like more dots start to connect. Uh, and, and then, right? And then I can see co-creation projects, partnership, alignment, things happening as mm -hmm. well, right? So then there, there's a two-way flow, right? Kind of. Absolutely. Kind of what seems to be, for me, happening, there's this old paradigm, maybe even left over from the industrial age, mm -hmm. of the kinds of ways that, that we work in teams, even, mm -hmm. and how that's structured, and, and there's less focus on the being, and there's more focus on what do we got to, how do we need to work together in order to get this project done in the shortest amount of time possible, under budget, with, you know, um, with no injuries and, and have a great product and, and satisfy customers in the end. Yeah. Then there's this new option that, okay, let's get to know each other first. Yeah figure out where we're going, it collectively kind of, you know, get an idea of where the horizon is and then figure out what kind of roads we're going to build to it, if that be the case, or, or you know, that's just kind of a loose metaphor, but yeah. uh, the paths that we take in order to do that seem to be, to the old paradigm, really confusing because mm -hmm. there's this lack of direction initially. Yeah. And so... And the direction comes from the getting to know one another, figuring out who we are together, yeah. the kinds of skill sets that, that are complementary and how those might work together in order to craft something that's necessary. Exactly. Or maybe even to redesign something that's already existing. Right. Exactly. Right. If you, if you are working with someone of trust, right, because you know them already, right, and you know what their superpowers are, really, and then you come together to co-create, let's say, a common mission, you're just really activating. It's like putting the puzzle pieces together, right? So let's say that your immediate team, let's see, you activate all the puzzle pieces and you can also say, hey, are there other pieces? Do you know the pieces that you know, that I know, right? And you bring other people, right, into the team. That's how you get things done, right? It's about the people that you know is gonna get it done and that, you know, they have your back people that you trust right uh so, so and really now you're not limited to your immediate environment because it's gone virtual and now have you also found uh that the that cyberspace kind of has its own consciousness it's paying attention oh yes <laughs> and that when you're on the quest whether the algorithms are reading you or not, depending on your searches, which is possible. But there's another element that's just too synchronistic okay. in a lot of ways when you're looking for something and all of a sudden it starts popping up everywhere. And it's not something necessarily that you put in the Google or any search engine at all. <laughs> it's better. Uh, except it's, the internal you know, one. Yeah, it's an right. internal one. Yeah, a synchronicity happens every time. What I've observed um, in the last years, when you start doing that inner work to tune in, you start radiating a certain, vibrating a certain vibration of frequency. And somehow people who are like you start being attracted to you and they start showing up. So it's it's better right, than a, what a search engine can do. The universe right. is, is sending the signal out. And that's, and it's that's truly how... an example of quantum physics and the uh, of quantum entanglement in the unified field, mm -hmm. which we used to call living in spirit. Mm -hmm. right? it, it's the same thing. We have all kinds of terms for it. And yet they all sound rather goofy until you have a direct experience of it. And then they all make sense. And language changes. It's like, well, like downloads, right? You mentioned that earlier. So yeah. people are going, what the heck's a download? Well, it's the same as <laughs> just intuiting something or, or, you know, having this arrival of a message inside right. that all of a sudden, whether it's a voice or an image or yeah. something like that, we don't realize just how connected we are to that unified field that's just ready to right like bulge whatever yeah. it can it's so interesting right even the use of words right obviously before i you know became aware of the second usage of download you know of course I, like thinking downloading from a computer 
right. I'm thinking downloading from the universe. How, what bigger computer do you want, right? Than downloading from the universe. So now if you're able to tune in and get downloads from the universe right. and sync when synchronicity happens, right? And paying attention to the synchronicities, that is the key to, right? Because if we don't pay attention to it, we can send all kinds of messages, right? The universe could be sending, but if we're not listening, Right? Then and, and also if we're not really pursuing an understanding what the messages mean, it it you know it may not the dots may not connect right away. But when you tune in and connect the dots, it makes it makes so much sense. It really does. And now that making sense, we take that to making sense common, mm -hmm. right? Oh. <laughs> the, 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 right. Yeah. Yes, common sense. <laughs> right. Well, it's not the common sense it is built in. It's that natural design that we have that is connected to everything. And and we're just now, especially with the downtime, where we've had the ability to begin seeking en masse, because a lot of people are starting to ask questions that he never would have asked had we not had this situation yes. to deal with. Yes. And you know, like with any major change we have to become so uncomfortable staying the same that we want to change. And now we're being forced yeah. right, to look at who we are, how we interact with each other, what narrative you're going to pay attention to, whether you're going to be a science freak and really look and dig deep and try, to try to understand that. We still have to have a certain level of intelligence to do that. And unfortunately, the majority of people don't. So, you know, that, so there's this effect that takes pay takes place kind of like the Lucifer Principle. I don't know if you've ever heard of that book. It, it was uh, written by Howard Bloom, who also wrote The Global Brain. And he basically took a scientific study mm -hmm. of history and how small groups of people manipulated masses through lies mm -hmm. told over and over again until they were believed to be true. Mm -hmm. And so when you have no other authority presenting information kind of like early on when all the people started getting censored or removed from YouTube and all these people that, that had valid information that was contrary to the narrative and then all of a sudden they're getting shut down. Well, that kind of ought to raise a red flag or two yeah. or, or a bunch. And then now how in this coming together and connecting the dots what kind of conversations are you noticing in regard to that uh to the coming out of let's say mm -hmm. uh, and moving forward it, are there real concerns about the narrative or are is it just that focus is turned towards okay what do we need to do it's interesting uh i see two different worlds right now <laughs> um there's a world of people who um, see the, the adversity and darkness, if you will. Uh, and there's a group who don't see it. They just see is actually the, the world. There are lots of opportunities in the world because we're connecting globally. So they're just people who are, I would say, very, awake, very awakened right now to who they are. So they're just mm -hmm. focusing on doing great things and activating their higher purpose. And then for the people who are bought into, right, this narrative, uh, I think they are almost, um, they're almost um, pulled in by, you know, what's around them because they're not focusing internally. They're mm -hmm. just focused on the external, like the news or, you know, all these headlines and which is gener generating a lot of fear because when people are in fear, right, they're not thinking rationally. They're not thinking logically. Um, no, there's no critical thinking or deductive logic whatsoever. Right, it's the common just sense. just getting pushed and pulled everywhere trying to avoid things. Right, right. We're not, it's like, but if people just take a step back, right, and logically think about it, right, they will find the answer very they will see the answer very right. clearly actually but and there's also the perspective i'm sorry go ahead well i think also maybe sometimes people don't want to see it too right there's like there's there's different groups i think right Some unfortunately people... i i'd have to agree with you uh, and we can't blame them really because they, they don't know what to do they, they just want to do you know 
have whatever they need and, and what's in front of them, not be concerned about the rest of the world. And that's kind of how things have been operating for the last 50 years or so. Yeah. I mean, well, there hasn't been that much concern. The uh, Then there's another perspective that from the one mind standpoint, yeah. it's all good, right? There's a process mm -hmm. taking place. Mm -hmm. And in those processes, there are desirable and undesirable things that happen within them. Mm -hmm. And yet the ultimate, you know, where we're going to be at the end, uh, it doesn't necessarily, you know, mean that the means justifies the end. Mm -hmm. However, like with, with any business plan, right? You begin the, with the vision, the end in mind, and, and then you take the steps back in order to do so. Yeah when you're doing these kinds of activities, what kind of steps, granted, you're still early in the process, right? As we, we've talked about, yeah. how do you see that process rolling out and the potential layers or steps or activities that need to take place in order for this to come, uh, this new living awareness, let's call it. Yeah to become present yeah. over time? I, I think it's about being in circles that resonate. So like when I think about, for instance, when I bring people together or Stronger Together X, like-minded people start attracting, coming together. I think when we have a safe space where everyone can share very openly, openly with no judgment, then we learn, right, so much more and we're learning directly from the people in the community and we learn about what's happening in the world from them right because we're, we're connecting globally right and we're we're then seeing what really is uh and also where we're also learning uh to better ourselves like by learning new ways it's just like when i talk to you i learned something i mean i said learn lots of things every time right because <laughs> you, you know we, we all have different uh well, we both have insatiable curiosities, Lisa. Exactly. But then you can't imagine, help but learn with that. Well, exactly, right? Imagine if you collectively bring larger and larger circles like this together, right? And then from around the world, all of a sudden, right? You you sort of everyone's frequency started vibrating higher and also at the same time, we're learning so much more wisdom. That's how um I, I feel like every single day I'm learning. Every conversation I have, I'm learning. So so it's about coming um together with people who resonate with you but also having an open mind i always come from the standpoint of i don't know what i don't know but i want to know <laughs> right. right and then well, all of a sudden so much knowledge and people yeah. start showing up to teach me right? and the universe has no secrets it <laughs> right? wants us to ask questions yeah and if we don't think we have the answer or, or we think we have a partial answer or are presented the truth then it's up to us to whack away at it until we really understand the core right. of it because we have multiple perspectives from which we can view any event yeah. and not all of them are clear uh, and not all of them are beneficial for uh, a collective environment or a collaborative environment Right. And, and sometimes people have to be ready for certain knowledge, right? So, so I, you know, I think about also... We sometimes. Can... <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I think, you know, it, it's, you got to be ready or it, it, you're going to miss it. Yeah, that is true. And here's another learning that, um, that I experienced is before, like, you know, I, I, I'm a good student. I listen right when I went to school and I realized I've been... I started to question a lot of the things that I was taught because I started to think, wait a minute, the victor, right? Writes the books. What is reality, right? Because I, I did a lot of um, like AP American history, AP history, and a lot of studies that deep, go deeper. Right. And um, as I dive deeper, I started to question, wait a minute, if I was not, if this, what I was taught was actually not the truth, it's only surface. What else is right. out there? Victor's started, always write history. Right, exactly. And, so and I started read. unlearning, right? How do you unlearn to relearn? Because I think that is the key, right? Because what have we been, what have we not been taught the right thing to begin with? Yeah. Well, there's a saying that, that, you know, men and women both have to unlearn 
outer teachings mm. because those outer teachings have all been through the victors. Yes. And in most cases, uh, and, um, and some of those victors happen very surreptitiously and in almost a, uh, I don't want to say sublime way, but definitely a subtle way where it's happened over time. I mean, the, even with, for instance, and I don't mean to point at Christianity as being a bad thing, it's not. However, the way the Bible was canonized wasn't necessarily the best thing. It with Constantine and his yeah. scribes and, and including all the pagan rituals and just enough to where Constantine was able to bridge church and state, rule them both with an iron fist under the threat of death if you don't believe what's in this book, right? So that we don't, you know, modern day Christians have most of them don't have a clue right. that that's what happened. Right. But, well, because for thousands of years, the same thing's taught. How do you know what's real anymore? Right. I mean, right. I mean, we like, you know, today, right. It's indigenous day. Now, right. Uh, yes. think about it. Think about what was taught about Thanksgiving when we were in, in school. Right. It's actually different when you dive deeper into the actual experiences. So again, right. It's all about diving deeper. And because when you start tuning in, you start to question everything mm -hmm. and, and, and it's important to question everything. <laughs> Oh, absolutely and we're obligated from that standpoint of inner awareness to, yeah. to test things to ask questions yeah. um, and not and to be fearless in them one of the things that i noticed and, and maybe you did too um in my corporate years that, that whenever you asked a question it was seen as a threat yeah <laughs> why well, is that well, I think people don't like people like questioning the status quo, right? Because may maybe they don't want to know the answer. Because <laughs> if you keep pulling the strings, you don't know what's going, what rabbit hole is going to go down. <laughs> right, and eventually the emperor has no clothes. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. But that's the the thing that we as individuals, collectives, even that's part of the process of learning how to have these sense making sessions. Yeah. where questions are just questions that they're right uh, they're from a desire to know and right. not a desire to pick on anyone or diminish anyone or anything like that and that's kind of the programming that we've gotten if you know we're asked the question well we must have done something wrong or if we, yeah. or we don't want to ask or we don't want to seem like we're stupid Mm, right? yeah. maybe that's the confrontation that oh i'm scared that i'm going to be exposed for not yeah. knowing something yeah. ah, who cares right it's well, just as easy say i don't know yeah well i think that's that's something people need to learn too right i, I think learning to realize that um number one like right um don't care about you know remove judgment period from anything right don't care about how people judge you and don't judge others when you start thinking it that way you, you can question anything right because if mm -hmm. you say something you don't care if someone right, right. Uh, that's you called want. intellectual humility where you're able to listen to potentially opposing opinions without being emotionally tweaked by them exactly exactly and also the concept of holding space that's, that's the concept that um that I think is really important for everyone to learn, right? Holding space means just being there to listen without judgment, without feeling the need to, right, to um, offer a viewpoint, really just to be there, right? And just hold the space where someone feels like they, they hurt, they're, they're heard and seen. Right. And I think if we all understand <laughs> holding space, I think we, we get closer, right, to uh, the, to the space where we all will understand each other more as humans, right? And it's yeah. through the questions, too. Yes, it, the of, questions. Of people say something, you, you know, you're curious, you want to know more. And, and uh, in my coaching business, that's one of the keys of being able to help a person unveil themselves to themselves. Yes, yes. Right? And being in a safe space to where all I'm doing is just asking questions that are obvious questions based on what's coming out of their mouth in order to dig deeper and, and 
allow them this, to explore that in a safe space where they don't yeah. they're able to be vulnerable and still have that psychological safe space. Yes, yes. And, and also, right, like if you think about um, like one world, like you're saying, I find that if people come from the space of no judgment, we gonna we can remove things like you know how we've been taught like hey i'm of this country i'm of this right um what if we just come from we all just from one world right we're all just i've got a galactic we, citizen bumper sticker actually. yeah <laughs> oh, galactic citizen i love that so i used to say i'm a global citizen but galactic citizen is yeah. even better right because when you look, think in that lens you really like you don't really think about the the the, the, the device that you know that's been kind of uh, mentally put there that, right. that's why i think we're also. not so small after all <laughs> we, we we are the, we are different but we are the same right and i think i think that is the key to um understanding each other better, you know one another better and being able to hold space because we realize everyone you know we're we're, we're all the same so mm -hmm. everyone just wants to be heard and to be seen at a basic level right Right. And, and, okay. So great cue, basic level on a practical yeah. side of things and pragmatic. What are your, in your networking, mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's put your networking hat on for a moment, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll play De Bono. Um, <laughs> the activities that are necessary or, or prescribed or, or um, professional, let's say, mm -hmm. what would those be like for people that are wanting to explore, for instance, LinkedIn or, or even the internet? LinkedIn is probably one of the best places. Yeah. Um, how do people, well, how would you advise people to explore that and the kinds of things that need to be in place and yeah. then how to use them? Yeah. So um, I just think like for instance, LinkedIn, right? Having your LinkedIn profile is kind of your personal brand. So just like, it's like the front of the store, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure your, who you are is authentically represented. So for instance, your headline, I would, I would use that as to share uh, who, who you are and what your passion project is. So it's very clear if someone sees your profile, they know right away who you are. And, 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 and what you're about. And, and, but also put to, um, another thing is to make use of your, your link, besides a LinkedIn headline, your LinkedIn, uh, summary, right. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more information. I would say use that space in a way that, uh, kind of like in a storytelling kind of way, right. It's kind of explain, uh, tells the story of who you are and your journey of what you've done and what your passion project is. Because if you kind of use the same guideline on what I said about the three questions, right? Who are you? What are your superpowers? What's your passion project? Think about right those as the way that you you want to um, people to see you, right? Get them people interested enough that they want to read more, right? Because most right. people have short attention spans. So I would definitely use that that blur uh, in a uh, very creative way. Another thing I always recommend is go find a few. Um, profiles that resonate with you that makes you like wow that's really good but emulate that right so then you're like well because if you appreciate it, it resonate with you i do the same same something similar um the other thing i notice uh people sometimes do and sometimes don't do is on on linkedin you can do um you you can create a a pro a, you can edit your public profile to have a url that is uniquely yours like, you know, like, like, you know, one with your name instead of the numbers, right? right. Uh, so, so mine is, you know, Lisa X Ma, right? So you can always find it. So, so then it's like your brand again, right? Uh, and, and the other thing to do is um, connect with people who are like you. It's like on LinkedIn, like I met a lot of um, super connector friends on LinkedIn. And so it's important to, um, to engage right with your tribe, so to speak, so that you're you're reciprocating right and supporting one another. So I think that's another thing I recommend doing. So so LinkedIn is definitely very powerful for networking because if you go to let's say any 
networking event, right? I, a business card is actually not that much done as the, these days as like, you know, hey, can I scan your LinkedIn QR code, right? right. So once they scan, do, will they, does it resonate? Or let's say if someone connects you, do they want to set up a meeting for you right away? Your profile needs to, right? Have, have a, something interesting about you that people will be like, hey, I can't wait to meet you. But when you write a blurb that is about purpose and passion, usually I, I find that's when people like, I really, you know, your profile really resonates with me, right? Because mm -hmm. that's close to their heart. And the, the fact that they're looking for those types of people, because there's still, you know, LinkedIn's a, a, got a, a, quite an array of professional mm -hmm. styles and different things that people are looking for, you know, job seekers or position yeah. seekers or something like that are probably going to have a little different profile yes, than that's someone that, that's really to the place where they're, they're comfortable with where they're at and they're looking to expand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also I use LinkedIn as a place to share your wisdom, right? So LinkedIn has a feature profile, right? Like when you post something, you can feature it so that it stays up on your LinkedIn, right? So when people come to your page, it doesn't get buried, right? It's on um, your feature mm -hmm. uh, page. And then, so if you, you know, and cause they can see all your activities, right? So I, I would say, keep it, uh, keep it very concise and succinct, but at the same time, feature the things that you may want to get feedback on, right? So sometimes what I do is uh, if I share something that uh, I want to, you know, uh, highlight people or shine the light on certain things, I'll, I'll call them out. Like for instance, when I have events, of course, like the speakers that I just all constantly want to shine the light because they have great wisdom to share. So I'll always tag them, right? So that they see and also their, their audience sees it. So co always constantly, you know, how do you amplify uh, and constantly right, make sure that um, your community also see what mm -hmm. amazing thing that people in your community are doing. So those are, I think, it helps a lot. In and the, I'd agree. It, it, tagging, especially initially for me, I've been on it uh, since the beginning and I was very reserved and uh, like, uh, I'm not sure that people actually want to be, you know, um, have their space invaded. It's kind of how I thought about it. <laughs> Yeah, and then after a while, I got all I got over playing space invaders, and <laughs> and went to hey, this is a practical purpose, and and it's an accepted practice in order to help share what you have, make it available to others. Uh, most people don't mind being tagged, and if they do, they'll probably let you know. Yeah, but it does it. it um, you know, I did a thankful post the other day that yeah. uh, it was amazing at how many people just followed suit, started thanking everybody for, you know, and tagging it's people. Ripple and, effects and, like that, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. And here's another thing. All of us are super, super busy, right? So when you tag someone, you're just like, oh, hey, I thought of you. There's something that you may want to take a look at. So it's really, it's, it's like not spamming, right? Spamming is something that that that's not what we're about right but how do you call attention to something that someone that you think right would resonate so that they see and it create these ripple effects so that's mm -hmm. the way i see it like how do you do how do you how do you inspire people to create ripple effects and so that they're sharing this knowledge that these are all busy people who may want to see right so, yeah. and, and it's all an experiment too mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. don't be afraid of well, for me, I had to get over the fear of, well, wait a minute, I need to change. And so I just started to yeah. experiment and explore different headlines and, exact, and exactly. photos and, and different things to just, you know, and I gradually, you'll distill it down to where it's got something pretty solid. But And that's kind of the process of everything, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Right. You have to go with the flow, just like who we are as people, right? We're constantly evolving and changing. So same thing your 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 page should change also right with you <laughs> so right if you want to amplify certain things you should really be focusing on those things and that's why and it's okay right it's it that's that's what's it for so you it's your choice it. it's, it, your it's choice. you so yeah. be you <laughs> yeah be you. the key is authenticity right as long as you remain authentic to yourself and to other people right that is the key and and you know but words are words but but you know, go and, you know, evolve it, but take what resonates, right? Um, like, for instance, like, for instance, you know, like Corey, right? Corey connects, like, I love who he is and what does all like you, you see what he does, right? So then he always teaches too, right? It's not being authentic. So 
someone like Corey, right? Look at his profile, right? Look at others. Like, and so if you like something, right, then think about how do you create like a mirror, right? Because we're a mirror mm -hmm. of one another, right? So then same thing in your profile. I taught high school for almost a decade and, and <laughs> I learned educators love to steal stuff from each other, right? And, and it's an accepted practice because you just, you're looking for what works. It's, and, it's how you do it, right? So here's another yeah. thought you were asking me about like early in my career, what I learned. At Deloitte, right, when we go to any client, we always do a best practice study to see what is the best in the process uh, tools in the marketplace at this present time, right? Because things are always changing. Sure. So we look at the best of the best, and then we look at, well, what is the need of this client? So what are the things we would apply that makes sense for this client, right? But you don't take everything, but you apply it, but you want to make sure that they're, they are even better than the best practice, right? And that's how we should apply it for us as well. We should always be looking at best practices, uh, and, and, but then customize it for yourself, apply mm -hmm. that, right? And, and that, that is the way you perfect, perfect things align to you, right? <laughs> so. And it does, you know, create that uh, capacity for being found, mm -hmm. not just for yes. reaching out and, and making impressions that yeah. hopefully are the, your best, but yeah. also for others that are looking and, and um, it just, I just had a lawyer reach out here locally once talked to me about uh, the independent Arizona party or independent party for Arizona mm -hmm. in uh, 2012. This is another one of those things that I'm experimenting with. I got tapped on the shoulder and, and um, to look up the independent party domain name for Arizona. Mm. And so I went out, I looked at all the other states and what their independent party uh, domain structure looked like. And, and it was all independence with the state name. And mm. so I looked up independence, Arizona, it was available. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is just outrageous, you know, click. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I got it and I built a website about making sense common and how to work together and, and you know, no division yeah. of the aisles, just looking, you know, focusing attention, intention and interaction on what needs to be done to serve the community. Yeah. Well, that was up for, uh, that was 2012. So that was up until 2018. And somebody reached out and said, hey, I, I like what you're doing. I want to help out, see what we can do. So I completely redesigned the site. So it has all the things necessary to download forms, the, electro, the electorate pages, as well as the different counties. And um, because the independent party actually does not exist in Arizona. Oh, That's the whole thing. And in my mind, this could be a third party neutral as one of my roles as a facilitator for mm -hmm. meetings. So I'm the third party neutral that comes in and get every, gets everybody on the same page, hopefully. So I thought this would be one of the ways to do that. So now I'm getting another guy reaching out, a, a lawyer this time that wants to talk about, hey, you know, let's see what the possibilities are here because, you know, maybe it's time. When I first built it, uh, 2018, actually, mm -hmm. there was uh, 28,000 or 20,036 signatures necessary. Now it's over 30,000. Oh. And just because of the population influx and the voter registration went up percentages so i'm i'm curious as to how that might play out over time because it's just sitting there and then yeah uh, what i find interesting that speaking of algorithms earlier and search engines even having the site perfect in all the search engine and content yeah. related things it still doesn't show when you when i it, search for yeah it's an interesting that i i learn uh about networks, right? It's the referral network that is the power. I think, uh, whereas before it's about, you know, driving traffic, right, to a site and perfecting the search engine. But I do think uh, the now and the future of connecting and marketing video is actually referral marketing mm -hmm. based on communities and this is what i've seen with um strong together x like uh i i literally connect with thousands of people and they all have communities just through these referral communities and and 
you find what you seek much faster and right because referral gets there much faster and and absolutely and so, so so you that that way of the paradigm i think is shifting right so so then i almost think i mean i worked at yahoo right so i'm so i'm I'm, 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 I'm I'm seeing that community is the way uh and and referral communities right imagine like Hey, if you know five, you you know you recommend five friends and five recommend five, right? right? You make this thing go viral, right? And that is the way. And if you think about um, based on collective interest, right? Find the community that's interested in that and activate and incentivize everyone, you know, to to share. Like for instance, uh, I'm hosting, uh, I'm partnering uh, with a couple of amazing partners to do a. Um, uh, a workshop uh, for wellness and life coaches is about how do you grow your business, your coaching business virtually. But that, what we're going to talk about is really about how do you build these virtual referral communities? How do you create a referral affiliate program, right? So that when people put give, you give back to them. So mm-hmm. to me, right, that's it's a uh, it, it's the kind of community that will grow stronger. Right, stronger together right? right right and more people they will and want to invite more people right because if they're benefiting and they're meeting people who they seek and they're also right creating abundance then you know then that's the way and you don't even have to put out um budget up front right for marketing what you do is that if someone refer right let's say um you know a sale you then pay right you, you just reward right that's they pay for, for poor performance rather than pay for yeah. quick. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, right? So so then it's it's a it's a it's a it's a model that I think is for the future model. Um and it's all about people. And um this is the part that I, I'm personally very fascinated about. And like I said, I've connected with thousands of people. I don't do any outreach, but after every event, I guess so much, um, so many people wanting to connect and also referring people and people wanting to bring more people next time Mm -hmm. people asking what when's the next gathering because they they just see it right so and and we're all making friends and building like you know business or personal relationships through all of this and because and it's really fun right you just go to a gathering you're like oh my gosh that was just so amazing i just had such amazing conversations and i i felt like we were so yeah right there's so much synchronicity and that happened well, it's much different than going to like the, the traditional business networking meetings where you walk around looking for somebody to connect with and, and yeah. maybe or maybe not finding them right. or where here you're all have something in common to begin with and so there's that next level of integration where you find the individuals that you connect with more and and, you know exactly uh, create the networks yeah it's actually a referral network by definition somebody knows somebody so everyone's somehow connected right it's it's Mm -hmm. actually less than six degrees right now i'm thinking it's probably three degrees of separation i've always thought you know kevin bacon is like "Eh." yeah it, it was a great start right to even you know conceive that well maybe six degrees it is possible well, I think and, six degrees before the technology right with the technology right it, it's i think happening much faster because if that's why i'm i'm very interested in bringing um high conscious super connectors change makers and light leaders together right if we bring this group together right then think about it everyone has a community right then we activate each other then how right. that much right it's what three, was, three degrees or less of separation. and i can i was even an example of that in that some of the posts that you've made and, and acknowledge people of, of which you included me, I went through those and, and some of them I was first, uh, first level connections and, and the rest of them, I was only second. There were no thirds. And I'm like, wow. Isn't it amazing? Right? So they're already right there. And it's just, you know, one more yeah. step. Uh, yeah. Occasionally there was a third, but I, I was surprised at, at how <laughs> close we already were anyway exactly exactly and that's why it's so exciting so what i try to do is i always I, with stronger together x i think about we're coming together to connect to multiply and to amplify each other so then right we we connect in the actual event we do the breakout rooms and the reason why i, I tag everyone is because we are we are a community already the moment we decide to show up for that event right we mm-hmm. are that event hub and then so when 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 after the event 
the, the connection, right? It's very important to continue. And that's why in case you didn't meet already, you didn't connect, I also tag you, right? And then, then you can go and find everyone. And then whoever resonated, you're like, hey, let's have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, right? Because right. you already met, you have an icebreaker already. Right? I'm probably one of the most proactive people I know where I'm always reaching out and connecting and, and just to see what's there. Why not? Yeah. And the, and the conversation, just amazing. I mean, I've met so many amazing people. I made so many friends, so many friends that I haven't even met in person yet. And when we meet in person, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> right? Well, I'm so. certainly looking for those times opening up and, uh, and creating the face-to-face -face events. I yeah. really think that and maybe how let me ask you this how do you think these face-to-face -face events are going to roll out and what kind of local activity may happen from that in, in your mind what would you like to see yeah i i see this evolving definitely into um in-person events because right now right we're a global community people connecting from around the world i almost see that at see it as like we're gonna have in-person events, also retreats in different parts of the world. So if you if you wanted to gather, right, with someone that's in your city, right, because you already mm -hmm. met in person, right, so now you can either have one-on-one -on -one virtual coffees, right, if you just, you know, wanted to, it's just the network is there. But right. then if you want to bring people together, right, for an in-person meeting, then you can. Like, for instance, I used to, before the lockdown, have what I call Block Party X, uh, bring people together to to basically bring neighbors together to local restaurants to support the local business, but then it's a networking event actually thereby, right? Then meeting their neighbors and then supporting local businesses. Right. Right. So same same thing. I just see like, what if well we can have in different cities, but also people love to go on retreats, right? So we can have a retreat in Hawaii, right? Or in Europe somewhere, or, you know, in Asia, right? And you see how amazing it is? It's like your own version of Burning Man, if you will. But we just, you, just, you just meet the people that you see. You, you know them already, right? Because you already met virtually. Sure. You meet together, right? You just go, it goes next level. And, and, wow. it's, and the only difference then is what direction your head goes, depending on how high they are. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, so you want to right have that kind of experience. Like, so before um, the lockdown, I used to go on a lot of wellness retreats, like in the Redwoods, uh, in Lake Tahoe. Uh, I would like to also, you know, bring people together in that capacity where it's really about um, coming together to enjoy the ex immersive experience, but you're also learning um, inwardly. <laughs> And outwardly, right? Uh, and but but we're also sharing it, having everyone share their knowledge because we all have something to share, right? So absolutely, yeah. So that's where I would love to see uh, this evolve. <laughs> and we are in that state of evolution right now, where there's a lot of things happening, and not just. I mean, you're you've got one network there are probably dozens uh, of similar activities and wouldn't it be great if all those leaders exactly would, would actually come together and say oh let's just have a, let's throw a huge event and get everybody involved exactly and that's what stronger together x is about right it's about the super connectors they're community leaders of every group it's because the world's so abundant right there's plenty of space it's just really about how do we activate each other so that so that we collectively <laughs> be one, right? That's really what it is. Because when you when you think abundantly, there's no competition. We really just how to how do we? No, nor up? is this giving up your will to, uh, you know, the whole concept of oneness. People think that uh, tend to think, I believe, uh, or used to anyway, that it was kind of nebulous. It's like oh, that there's this one world government or, or, you know, something is in charge and it's not me. No. Well, you know, the reality is in that, whether you want to call it the one mind or, or one world, there's still a division of labor. There's still things that need to get done. The physical world's not going to change. It's just how we interact with it that will. Yes, yes, exactly. We're just activating what we're meant to do be best at, right? And then we, we, we find each other, right? So it's like the again, the trusted community on a global level, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I see it happening already virtually. Like, 
I mean, I see the activation that's happening already. That's why like I said, I'm very excited when, when we all actually meet in person because yeah. we fast track everything already, right? Because like, imagine, right? Every place you go to, there's somebody there, right? And you go to Europe, there's someone there, Asia, someone there, right? South America, right? Canada, US, <laughs> you know, all the places. So yeah. uh, Africa, I mean, I have connected with like so many amazing people there too. Yeah, like, like I said, most... Uh, that's why I'm having events, right, in morning time zones that is friendly to Europe and Africa and Middle East. And then, you know, in the evening, right, Asia and... Um, I had a 2 a.m. call with some Europeans <laughs> last week. <laughs> well, that's why exciting. having, yeah, having, having um, you know, different opportunities to connect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing to meet uh, so many amazing people from around the world. Yeah. You've kind of alluded, and, and you had nuggets strewn through our conversation that would be applicable to people just entering this new awareness for themselves and, and, and looking around trying to figure things out and uh, and find their way yeah. what kind of, of advice could you give to a newbie that's just coming into finding who they are and, and exploring the things and having the at least some um, technology skills Mm -hmm. what would you advise them to do or, or how might you advise them uh i think the first thing right um that inner work that uh is really important so i would i would advise whatever you do you continue to have an inner work process like like for instance i i, I mentioned i get up before sunrise every day and i tune in because when you find that inner peace everything will fall into place uh, so, so have that practice first so that you, you heighten your intuition is heightened. Uh, the second thing is, um, let's say if you want to be more, you know, well-versed with technology or the latest and how to connect virtually, I would just connect again with the people, right? Who's doing that, that you want to simulate or emulate, right? And either partner with them or, you know, go to do what they do and maybe even ask for their advice because generally givers, right, they'll, they'll naturally want to help you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, right? Yeah. yeah. And and if you want to do how to host virtual events, everyone's always welcome to come to my gatherings. That's what I do. I became almost like a Zoom coach at the beginning because people didn't use Zoom before, right? I started training people out of like, this is how you do it. Like, right. workers, these are the questions you want to ask. And this is how you create a hub, right? I literally became a coach just to, because I wanted to share these easy ways to do it. And usually technology is really easy once you remove the blocks. I think most pe some people have these block thinking is hard. Well, it's actually not yeah, well, they're, And they're afraid of it. They're afraid that if they hit the wrong key, it's going to wipe out the computer. Right, like right. That. And it's yeah. like, no, there's, none of that's going to happen. Yeah, Control Z. There's no, fear. <laughs> exactly. there's no fear, right? And that's the thing. And 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 I I think it's just about like trial and error too. Uh, and because in the beginning, for instance, I did a bunch of a mix of webinars and virtual events, but I'm like, I really like this. I'm just going to keep doing it, right? And as I was showing people, same thing, like, oh, I saw the activation that was happening. So I would just say, go just look at what resonates, right? And don't mm -hmm. be afraid to ask for help. That, that's the other thing, right? We, we are always learning, so it's important to ask. So like this technology, Zoom is actually really easy to use. I'm actually doing for like more immersive experience using other platforms just to change the experience. But right. We can learn anything, right? Just if we don't know anything, just look it up on YouTube. Right? <laughs> YouTube has everything, uh, right? Or like I said, just ask somebody in, right? I think people are willing to help uh, and go to, I was going to learn from your trusted circle, I guess is the, the advice that I would give because if you, you know, they're trusted circle, you know that they're going to be delivering value. Uh, so yeah, so I, I would just go to that, yeah. Lisa, I have so much enjoyed this conversation. You, uh, you've offered a lot to our viewers to, to really think about and, and, um, and possibly, uh, it, and even have some possibilities to coagulate. That's one of my favorite terms. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I really love connecting the dots with you as well. And thank you for um, inviting me on your platform and to, um, 
you know, to connect the dots, as I say. Because and lot we shall continue to do so, I'm sure. Yes, definitely. Right. Well, thanks again so much. And namaste and in lock. Thank you all for tuning into this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and I'll see you next time.